Intelligent design is not at all controversial in one sense, and it's just basically this idea that we can look at things and tell that thought went into them, tell that they are uh, something that was, um, that was thought about and organized in the mind and then implemented in the material world. Where it becomes controversial is when we apply that non-controversial um, idea to life, uh, where we look at living things and we have that same intuition. We look at them and say, this was organized brilliantly in the mind and then implemented. And there we're told, no, no, it was not. This, this evolved and no, no mind was responsible for it. So in one sense, I think intelligent design is not at all controversial. It becomes controversial only when we apply it to life, but it clearly is begging to be applied to life. I think if we could get over this barrier where um, biologists, life scientists, are not allowed to think about biological systems as being um, intelligently designed, as being things that uh, existed in concept form before being implemented in physical form, then we'd be free to think about the conceptual, to think about life at the conceptual level. What is the concept? What are the concepts that are being implemented in living things? If we could get to that project, we haven't even been allowed to start it. If we could get hundreds of thoughtful biologists thinking about life in that way, I think we would see just a, a huge change and a huge blossoming of biological thought. At, at this point, being, being uh, in the straitjacket of materialism, we can't even answer the question, what is life? We would be able to address that question if we were allowed to think about the conceptual aspects of life and not just about the material. I'm arguing, and I argue in the book, that um, intelligent design doesn't give us everything we need in biology, but it opens the door to a brand new way of doing biology, a brand new way of thinking about biology. Intelligent design is not the end, it's the beginning. But we need to open that door because uh, for 150 years that door has been closed. We're forced as biologists to think about life as a material thing that happened by accident. And that is a science stopper because all the interesting questions at the high level are going to be answered and addressed when we open the door and acknowledge that no, life is something that is brilliantly designed. So let's start thinking about the design principles. Let's start. Let's start thinking about the concepts that are implemented in living things. There's always been a fundamental difference between um, creationism or creation science and intelligent design approach uh, to biology. The one, creation science, begins with an understanding of the Genesis account and tries to reconcile that to uh, scientific data, to scientific observation. The other begins really with an unpolluted, um, unembellished version of science, which is simply that science is the use of observation and reason to come to true understanding of the world. So intelligent design does nothing other than take a science view in its simplest form and apply it to the world and the living world in particular. When you do that, you end up being forced by reason and observation to this conclusion that living things are designed. <music>